Welcome to this video on natural selection. Now some of you might have come across natural selection at level two. If you didn't, don't worry, all the key ideas are woven into this video. So we're gonna start by clarifying the definition you need for natural selection. So the formal definition is on the screen, but basically it means survival of the fittest. When you're looking at any group of animals, there's gonna be some natural variation. Some will be bigger and smaller, some will be faster and slower. And natural selection means that the ones who are better suited to their environment are the ones that are likely to survive. And so if the ones that are more likely to survive have offspring because they're not dead, then overall that population will get stronger and stronger. So that leads to the purpose. The purpose of natural selection is to help the survival of a population. So for example, if we had a population of rabbits, there's a whole bunch of them. Some are faster and some are slower. But if hunters came along like different wolves or hawks or any kind of predator, then some of the rabbits are gonna be eaten. And it's more likely that the slower rabbits will be eaten instead of the faster rabbits. So once hunting's carried on, a bunch of the slower rabbits will end up being killed. And so there's only faster rabbits left. And because these faster rabbits are then the ones that produce offspring, they breed together, then it's likely that those offspring are going to be faster as well because they had fast appearance. So on average, rabbits get faster and therefore they're more likely to survive. That's how it helps the survival of a population. So if you want to describe this benefit clearly in biological words, the term you want to use is the best phenotype. Now phenotype means a physical characteristic, so something like speed or height or size, they're all physical traits or phenotypes that we can use. Or if you want to have a whole explanation, you can say the phenotype that's best adapted to an environment or a biological niche. They're the ones that are more likely to survive, and therefore they're the ones that are more likely to pass on their genes. So that's natural selection, and in this video, we're going to cover three different types of natural selection, and this will form a basis for all the future videos and the key ideas that you need to know. So the first type of natural selection you need to know is stabilizing natural selection. If we have a population, which is this black dotted line here, and there's natural variation, so say let's talk about human height. Some people are going to be shorter, there's going to be a lot of people in the middle here, and some people are going to be taller. But over time, possibly the environment is best suited to people of average height. So the people that are taller will end up dying off, the people who are shorter will end up dying off, and so it favors the average. So we can also call this selecting against both of the extremes. So therefore the population over time becomes much more based around the middle. Or if you wanna write this formally, you wanna say that natural selection is for those individuals that have the average phenotype, so they're near the middle here. So this is against the extremes of that phenotype. And over time, that population will get more similar. The second type is called directional natural selection. So if we bring up a similar graph, the population might start the same, some shorter, some taller people. But over time, it'll select against one extreme. So say taller happens to be better in, say, a desert environment because people can see you, you look bigger, you look more scary, so people don't want to attack you as much. So in that example, people of a smaller size would end up dying off, and on average, the population would get taller and taller. So this is selection against an extreme. And if you want to write that down, you can say it's natural selection for one extreme phenotype is the keyword you want to do, but it's at the expense of the other extreme. So over time, that'll change in one direction. And it could go in either direction. So it could be selecting for shorter people over taller people, for example, if they were living in a forest environment. For taller people, it's too hard for them to hide from predators or move around in the forest environment, so they might get selected against, and therefore the population would get shorter over time. Either way, it's selecting against one extreme and it'll be directional, so it'll move in one direction towards a certain phenotype. The final and third type we're going to learn about is disruptive natural selection. So this is where it goes everywhere except the middle, it's the opposite of the stabilizing one. So you've still got your natural variation to start with, but if you either are shorter or taller, maybe you thrive, but if you're in the middle, maybe you don't survive and it's no good at all, it's the worst of both worlds. So this is called disruptive natural selection, and the word you need to know is bimodal. So over time, this leads to bimodal, which in our height example would lead to more shorter and more taller people, but much fewer average height people. So writing this down properly would say that over time, it leads to a bimodal distribution of phenotypes. So this is two distinct phenotypes that develop for a particular characteristic. Or maybe these two phenotypes live in a different environment, like one is in forests and one is out in the desert. So these are the three types of natural selection. So here's what you need to know from this video. The most important thing is understanding what natural selection actually is. It's survival of the fittest. It's where the phenotype that's best suited to that environment is most likely to survive. And because they're likely to survive, they're the ones that have offspring, and the genes that they pass on are also more likely to create offspring that survive. 
so it makes the population or the species more likely to survive over time. We also learned that natural selection is divided into three different types, the first of which was stabilizing, where you select against both extreme phenotypes, or you select for the average phenotype, so things get closer and closer towards the average or towards the mean. The second thing we learned was selection against an extreme, so directional natural selection. So this is where you select or favor one extreme phenotype over the other, and therefore the population ends up getting more and more extreme over time towards that end of the spectrum. And the final thing we learned was disruptive natural selection. This is where you select for extreme phenotypes only, but not for the average. So in the phenotype of height, you'd be selecting for shorter and taller. And the word we needed to know was bimodal. And this is everything you need to know for natural selection. Now this provides a framework for future videos, but there's no direct NCA questions only on this topic. So you'll see this popping up in future questions that we cover in future videos.